Hey everyone, yes I do mean you, it's me, Silver Daddy. Are you ready for another exciting adventure, aka trip or trippin' with me? We're about to discover and share some amazing life stories. If I take a few sudden tangent turns along the way, don't worry, because I'll find our way back. Come on, climb aboard, and buckle up, because we are ready to start another great episode of Drippin' with Silver Daddy. Hey everyone, welcome to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. And you're in my hometown of Cincinnati. This week's show is going to be from Cincinnati, Ohio. And this is where I was born and raised and lived here until I was about 40-something years old. And that interesting building behind me, if you're watching on YouTube, that's City Hall. Very old. Downtown Cincinnati is a really cool place. And it's not really that busy most of the time. There's a lot of things happening in downtown Cincinnati from big parties, big corporations, big festivals, you name it. Like right behind me, there's a building, it's WLW. And WLW is one of the oldest TV stations in the country. And it was one of the oldest radios. They had a 50,000 watt radio station. They used to do the old programming before TV where they would play music. And then down behind that is the Kroger's Corporation. Kroger's is down in Cincinnati. And Procter and & Gamble and Fifth Third Bank. All those corporations are here. Cincinnati is known for a lot of things. One of them is that it has the biggest Oktoberfest in the United States. The biggest. So if you want to drink beer, eat pretzels, and have German food, you need to come to Oktoberfest in Cincinnati. Cincinnati is a very German city. Even before this whole craft beer craze kicked off, Cincinnati was home to a lot of different breweries. Hudipole, Burger, they were all big breweries here in Cincinnati that eventually sold out. Hudipole sold out to Samuel Adams. Burger sold out to Utapol at the time. But beer, brats, sauerkraut are big things here in Cincinnati. Did you know Steven Spielberg was born and raised here in Cincinnati? University of Cincinnati has a great film study school. Cincinnati is home to two very large universities. Xavier University and the University of Cincinnati. So it is a very much a college town. But we have the professional sports. We have the Reds. Did you know they're the oldest baseball team in the major league? We have the Bengals. We have ice hockey. We also have FC Cincinnati. And I'm gonna be down in that area today. There's a lot of things down there that's worth seeing. Cincinnati is also, we will tell people, we're the home to chili. But our chili is different than Texas chili or any other chili. We like Skyline. You're either a Skyline fan or you're a Gold Star fan. Two major chili. Until you tried Cincinnati chili, you don't know chili. Did you know Cincinnati is the birthplace and the home of Cornhole. We're the Cornhole capital of the world. That was actually started over on my side of the town. In Cincinnati, we either have the west side or the east side. You're a west side or an east sider or north side, but mostly we go, you're either east side or west side. I was born and raised on the west side. Our music hall, which is more like the building behind us in that Victorian um, architect it is haunted it is one of the most haunted buildings in the United States 
we're gonna have to go down the music hall. It's right down the street. And it's real close to where Cincinnati plays and Finley Market. Oh, we'll have to go to Finley Market too. Maybe I'll do some shopping, buy some stuff for the holidays. These are great places. They're all historical, all real close to town. Cincinnati was one of the stops of the Underground Railroad. There's also the Underground Railroad Museum in Cincinnati. And as I told you, you know, we're a very sports oriented city. So let's talk about history and some of the things Cincinnati's known for. So first we were founded in 1788. That's when we became a city. In 1811, the first steamboat came up the Ohio River. The steamboat name was New Orleans and that made us become a port on the Ohio River for steamboats. We were the first city in Ohio to publish a newspaper. In 1835, we had the first airmail. Can you believe that? I don't even know if the Wright brothers had their plane by then. But in 1835, we had the first airmail. It was in a hot air balloon. Go figure. We were the first city to hold a song festival, and that was in 1849. And that song festival is how the music hall started. So we're definitely gonna have to go check all that out. We were the first city to actually have a Jewish hospital. In 1850, Jewish hospital, in Cincinnati was started, and so was the first greeting card company. In 1853, we had the first steam fire engine, and we invented the first fireman pole. You know, go jump on the pole. Everyone likes jumping on poles. And then in 1869, this is for my nephew Bradley, we were the first city to have a weather bureau. Also in that year, that's when the Cincinnati Reds started. In 1850, we're the first city that had a female who owned and ran the large, a large manufacturing company. Uh, her name was Longworth something, and she actually owned Rookwood Pottery. Rookwood Pottery is famous and worth a lot of money if you have any rook, Rookwood Pottery. And then in 1902, we built the first concrete skyscraper. And in 1954, we licensed the first TV station. Cincinnati has a lot of firsts. And this city has changed a lot even since when I moved from it. As you can hear the bells, Right down the street, we have two different religious congregations. We have the cathedral, which is Roman Catholic, and exactly right across the street, we have the large Jewish synagogue. So it's kind of neat. The Catholic cathedral and the Jewish synagogue face each other here in Cincinnati. There's so much we're going to do. I'm in downtown. There's cars coming at me. So I think it's time that I need to take a break and have you listen to our sponsors. And I'll be right back from somewhere here in Cincinnati. So please listen to my sponsors because you're listening to me tripping with Silver Daddy. I'll be right back. Hi everyone, I am in my favorite place because as soon as you walk in, the smell of this high quality leather overtakes you. Yes, I'm at Leatherworks, my favorite place to shop. They have the highest quality of leather products in the Southeast. No, no, I'm not just talking about Southeast Florida, I'm talking about the entire Southeast of the United States. Their products are the highest quality leather in 
lot of them are made right here. And the great thing about Leatherworks is they do not discriminate against size. So even me, Daddy Bear, I can even find things that fit me here at Leatherworks. But it's not just leather, everyone. If you have a fetish, I guarantee you they have the fetish gear that you may want, let's just say. They have a lot of things to choose from. Go online to leatherworks.com and that's works, W-E-R-K-S. And while you're there, you can check out, they have specialty classes. You know, if you have like a fetish you wanna learn more about, you can go there and join the lifestyle program because then you get discounts on in-store promotions. Hey everyone, make sure you go to Leatherworks. That's works with W-E-R-K-S and you can buy online. Hey everyone, welcome back to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. See that beautiful building behind me? That's right outside of downtown and that's Music Hall world-famous music hall, let me tell you. This building behind me is actually built on the foundations of an orphanage, an orphan asylum that was built in like 1844. So they used the foundation to build music hall on. It was actually completed, like when we say completed, pretty much done more like 1878. But there was a building here a little bit before that. So Music Hall was originally built in an area that's known as a pauper cemetery. I'm in a park across the street from it, and this park and where Music Hall is behind me, this was all a pauper cemetery. For those who don't know what a pauper cemetery is, it's basically when someone dies and they don't have money to be buried, they're just buried in plots, like no gravestones or anything like that. So keep in mind what I just said, it's built on a pauper cemetery, because I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. But the building started, there was some festivals that were coming into town, song festivals, and they needed a place. So they built a building, not this one yet, but they had a building on the site. And when they built this building, and it was 1875, they had May Festival, a big song festival. They do it every May, celebrating spring and all that. And there was a guy there named Reuben Springer. Reuben Springer just happened to be a very wealthy German from Cincinnati. Well, they were at the Spring Fest in 1875 and thunderstorms came in. The thunderstorms were so loud and they hit the tin roof of the building that you couldn't even hear the people singing. And when you couldn't hear the people singing, that's when Reuben Springer made the decision that he was gonna spend his money and build a more permanent music hall. So it was finally completed in 1878. Now the reason it's important to know that it was built on a pauper cemetery, because that building there is considered to be one of the most haunted buildings in the United States. Well known, well documented, on a lot of haunted tours, you know, Eric Kunzel was a famous conductor of the symphony here. He has even gone on record saying he has been here at three in the morning working. He says the ghosts aren't in the office, but if you go walk in the hallways, they have no problem introducing themselves to you. So he even is well aware of how haunted this building was. It is still the second largest opera house in the United States. The main room in here were all the symphony, 
the ballet, the Cincinnati Pops. What am I forgetting? Probably the May Festival. All that takes place in here. And it seats somewhere. They can change the seating from 22, 2300 to 2500. Let's just say that. They can seat a lot of people inside. Inside, when you first go in, there is a chandelier. And this is what I found interesting. I thought the chandelier was here like for eternity, but the chandelier actually was purchased in 1975. And it came from Czechoslovakia. The chandelier is pretty famous because it's 21 feet wide and it has over 96 candles that hold it up. And it weighs 15,000 pounds. Not a small chandelier, right? That's pretty damn big. But then they have a giant ballroom here. And that's where we had our high school proms. I can tell you one thing. We came down here to decorate for our high school prom back in 81. Don't tell anyone. But we also brought a bunch of alcohol with us. And we put it in the men's bathroom in the drop ceiling. So we would go into the bathroom and we would block the door and get the alcohol out. And we came in because they did breathalyzer tests. They would smell your breast, you know, your breath, the priest would. Make sure you weren't drunk. But we left pretty damn toasted. I can tell you that much. But this is one fine example of what, what we call Victorian Gothic revival. And it's actually one of the last major Victorian Gothic revival buildings that was built in the United States. And these windows here, right in the front, are famous because they're rose windows. A lot of famous people have played here, but also a lot of presidents have came here for the symphony. For instance, like you have Grant, McKinley, Roosevelt, Harrison, and Eisenhower, they've all been here to see the symphony or the opera or the ballet. But there's a lot of famous people who has played inside this place. The list is so long that I don't have time to go through that entire list. But it has also held the um, Republic and the Democratic National Convention have both been held here. So this is what, one of my favorite places, one of my favorite buildings. And it's starting to rain. Hey everyone, let's take a break and let me go find another place to go to. Please watch my sponsors and I'll be right back. Because you are listening to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. Stop, just like the sign says. I just thought of something. You know, if you're going on vacation and you need someone to watch your pet while you're gone, because you don't want to put them in that quote, pet spa or in that cage, I can help. Or if you have an elderly family member that you take care of and you need a fun loving silver daddy there just to have fun with them and watch them while you're running errands or have to work, I can help. Or if you just got that job and you're moving from Miami to LA and you got like two cars in that U-Haul that you have to drive, I can help. Just send me an email to trippinwithsilverdaddy at gmail.com. Now, if you have to like clean those leaves out of the gutter, I can't help. Sorry. Just saying. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. It is raining, so I need to get inside. And there's no better place to go inside than Finley Market. This market has been here for hundreds of years, I bet. I'm not sure how long it's actually been here. But I can tell you this, I came here as a little kid and when my aunt and uncle would come in from Chicago, we would come here, my aunt would do all her shopping and take all these meats all the way back to Chicago because she couldn't find a lot of the Polish stuff that she wanted. Inside this market, which is open all year round, except on Mondays. 
there is over 50 full-time places that sell meat, poultry, flowers, vegetables, anything that you can imagine that you would want. So if you're watching me on the YouTube, you'll see, cause I'm going to go in and I'm gonna cross the street. And normally all these side streets are filled with vendors. Just not the most beautiful day today. But like I was saying, over a million people visit Finley Market every year. It's a very popular place. And there's food that you can buy here that you can't find anywhere else, except maybe Jungle Gyms in, in Cincinnati, and that's too far away. Look, if you're watching, it's a huge market. And we start off with my favorite stuff. They have ice creams and spices and meats. This is where a lot of people come and get their ethnic food. Especially if you want a special type of spice. I guarantee you, if you need a spice, this place has the spice that you need. They have spices that look like from all over the world. How many spices do you carry? We carry over 400 varieties of whole spice and over 100 um, house-made house spice spices blends. spices that are yes. blends? Yeah, so all the blends we do um, here, that is to say we do it at our so, location. So I'm guessing this Bayou blend would probably be really good for ribs. Can you use it as a rub? I'll tell you one thing. I think it would make a good Memphis rub and put it on the ribs. Hey everyone, I'm telling you, if you're in Cincinnati, this is a great place to come and check out. There's a lot of shopping you do. And you know what? If you're shopping for holiday or you're shopping for a birthday, this is the place to be. And look, you can even have alcohol. These guys, where are you guys from? Well, I'm originally from Florida. I'm staying here. I'm from Florida too. Well, now I, I was born and raised here, but I am home for the holiday. What part of Florida? Uh, Palm Beach. Oh, you're right up the road. I'm from Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> My God, come all the way to Cincinnati and you meet locals. But at least they have beer. Where'd you get the beer? You're drinking a dark. Right here. We got the, season, the seasonal and the, uh, the lighter. Here, here. And you got a Bengals hat. Were you born and raised here? No, no. I'm just, I, I just like the team. I like the fans. But I'm a Dolphins fan by heart. But I went to a Bengals game, and the fans are die hard here. <laughs> there are good people in Cincinnati. We just all moved to Florida because it's warmer, and we have to come back for the holidays when it's cold. Hey guys, have a good day. Okay, everyone. I'm going back into the rain. Let me get the door for these ladies. Hi there. Now, what's also in this area, where Finley Market is at, I am just a couple blocks from Union Terminal or Music Hall. And then right over this area behind me in the same block area is where the Cincinnati soccer team plays or football depending on how technical you want to get on it. The one thing about Cincinnati, there's seven hills in Cincinnati. As you can see, if you're watching, this is one of the hills. But we're only right outside of downtown Cincinnati. And we're here at Finley Market. Hey everyone, I'm gonna get out of the rain. I'm gonna take a break and I'll be back at another location. Please listen to my sponsor because you are listening to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. Hey, every time I go out on location for Trippin' with Silver Daddy, I always have people who ask me, am I selling these tie dyes? You know, I make them myself. Everyone is unique and different. And I think I'm getting ready just to do that. 
it would be a very limited edition. And I'm kind of saying what you guys think. If you're interested in buying a limited handmade tie-dye from Silver Daddy, send me a message to trippinwithsilverdaddy at gmail.com. Remember, there's no G in trippin'. So let me know if you're interested in tie-dye. Hey everyone, welcome back to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. See that beautiful building behind me? That is Union Terminal. It's historical here in Cincinnati, Ohio. It was started in 1927 and it didn't get finished until 1933. And it cost over $41 million to build. When it was built, at that time, it was the world's largest half dome building in the world. It still today is the largest half dome in the Western Hemisphere. The rotunda, you know that round thing? The rotunda of the building it's actually extremely large. It's 180 feet wide by 106 feet tall. And the real cool thing about the rotunda is on both ends, like on this end of the rotunda and over on the other end of the rotunda, there's drinking fountains. And if you stand at the drinking fountain and you talk into the wall, it echoes over the rotunda to the other drinking fountain. So you get two friends on both sides of the rotunda on the drinking fountain and you can hear each other. It's amazing. And like I said, this building was done in the um, Art Deco form of architecture. So it was built on 287 acres of land. And there's, it was originally built as a train station. And this is considered the very last of the mega train stations that was built back in the 1920s and 1930s. Behind the building, there's over 94 miles of train tracks. So originally there was like seven different train stations in Cincinnati. And they built this to combine all the train stations into one. And it was done here. It was a major place for during World War II. The building itself was built to hold about 17,000 people. And it did 216 trains a day. During World War II, Soldiers had to get to their place of um, where they were going to be stationed by trains. So during World War II, this station here would have as many as 20,000 soldiers that would actually be in this building. Pretty amazing. But, and it was originally built by the city of Cincinnati and the B&O Railroad. That is the Baltimore, Ohio Railroad. They actually built it. In order to build it with all the train tracks, there was a road that went from the west side of Cincinnati, where I'm originally from, over to the downtown area east side, and they had to build a viaduct. And that's where the Western Hills Viaduct was built by the railroad in the city, and it cost them about $3.5 million dollars just to build this bridge to go over all the railroad tracks. That viaduct is about 3,500 feet long. So this was operating as a passenger terminal until 1972. In 1972, all the trains stopped running out of this building. However, in 1996, Amtrak came back, and there still today is an Amtrak that runs from Cincinnati to here. The building behind me, if you're watching me on YouTube, the Union Terminal building now housed 
three different museums, and it also has an Omni, Omnimax theater in it. It has the Cincinnati History Museum, the Natural History and Science Museum, and the Children's Museum. They all are in this. So now it's like a museum center. It is also on the historical list of um, buildings. And it made the historical list of the National Historical Landmarks. Inside the building, it's kind of cool. There's these giant murals. There's like 15 of them or so. And they all de depict different businesses in the Cincinnati area back in the times of the 30s. So there's a lot of just art and deco and all this cool stuff inside the place. Now, this place also has some significant value to me. Yes, to Silver Daddy. Because inside this place, this is where I took my first train ride when I was in Cub Scouts. When I was in Cub Scouts, we came down here, we got on a train that went about 10 miles out of the city and brought us right back. But it was the first time I was ever on a train. So I thought it was pretty cool. I liked it. I had a great time. I This is one of the iconic places in Cincinnati, Ohio. If you're ever in this area, you need to stop by, either for the museums or just for the beauty of the building. It's free to go inside the building. The museums are deeper inside the building. This building's much larger than it may seem if you're watching me on YouTube. I hope you like this because this is my hometown. What I consider my hometown. Hey everyone, we're gonna take a fast break. When we come back, I'll be somewhere else in Cincinnati, Ohio. You're listening to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. Did you know if you live within 20 miles of the ocean, there is saltpeter in the air. Saltpeter is very bad for your car. It can cause rust and dull your paint. So. You need to get your car washed at least once a week if you live within 20 miles of the ocean. That's why I go to Majestic Car Wash. My Blue Beauty, I only trust Majestic Car Wash. They're located at 2781 North Federal Highway. You know, you have your choice. Your car can go through the 40 foot long cleaning tunnel or it can be hand washed. They also have a detail shop that can make your car look brand spanking new. So where do I take my Blue Beauty? To Majestic Car Wash. You need to go there today. Hey everyone, welcome back to Trippin' with Silver Daddy. What a day in downtown Cincinnati, except for the rain. If it wasn't for that, it would have been great. I'm right outside of FC Cincinnati football or soccer stadium. And this stadium is actually right in the same area where I did everything. Do you see that building over there? The back end, that's the back end of Music Hall, that big red building after you see the little square building. I was just on the other side of that. That tall building right there behind the tower if you're watching on YouTube. That right over there is where Finley Market is. And right behind the stadium is Union Terminal. All these things are in the same area. The same area, people. That's why it makes it great. And you can hardly see it. Down that way, it looks like a church tower. That's actually City Hall. So downtown is behind these buildings here. What a great day. But I have to get back home to my family. Because you know what? I'm filming this on my birthday. When you watch it, it's probably not my birthday. But right now it's my birthday. And I have to get home. 
because we're going out to eat and have fun. Hey everyone, before I close out this episode, you know how I normally always close saying, hey, love, peace, and respect. Before I get to that point, I have a few things I would like to talk to you about. Yes, I do mean you. You. And that is how much I appreciate you. And I want to thank you for either listening to or watching Trippin' with Silver Daddy. It does mean a lot to me. I also need your help. Because as a Silver Daddy, I'm not really into the social media stuff like people who are much younger than I am. I need your help in getting me more followers, subscribers, and likes. So that's the one thing you could do is make sure you always subscribe, follow, and like all my stuff on social media. Then copy and paste my shows or anything and send it to your friends and say hey go check out silver daddy i would deeply appreciate all that and also there's a lot of people i need to thank on a regular basis and also i want to share with you some of the information from today's show and maybe about the places or the people i've talked to or just things that I think you should know. So in doing all that, I need to roll some credits. And one of those credits is gonna be how you can help me too. Because if you are able to make a small donation to the show, it would really help. Let me just tell you, to produce one show, just to produce one show, it would take about 25 people to donate $10. That's what it would take to actually, for me to go someplace, produce a show and get stuff ready. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna roll some credits to share some information with you. Now for me to roll the credits, that means I need to actually leave and roll the credits. I can roll the credits because I don't know how else to do it. I'll be right back. I will. back thanks for watching the credits and we are officially ending this podcast and this episode as i always say love peace and respect you've been watching or listening to tripping with silver daddy bye